For over a decade, researchers have studied the diet of the endangered southern resident killer whales. And new findings released today are giving us some clues on how best to revive our southern residents' population. With that said, Q13's Grace Lim live in Seattle with more on this really interesting study, Grace. Yeah, Matt and Jamie, the researchers looked at the southern resident killer whale diets all year round and found that while Chinook salmon continues to be their first food of choice, when stock becomes scarce, they look at other sources of food and diversify, diversify their diet, especially during the colder months. On target. Researchers gathered and analyzed 152 samples of feces of southern resident killer whales between 2004 and 2017 in the Salish Sea and outer coast waters and found Chinook salmon was always the prey of choice year round. Making up the majority of their diet in the mid winter to spring months. But in the fall, when Chinook salmon weren't as available, it only made up 50% of their diet, and orcas turned to other fish. Chum showed up as being important in the fall. Uh, on the outer coast, we saw things like halibut and lingcod, as well as steelhead, uh, play a role in their diet. Chinook salmon, which is also a threatened population, is still the most important prey for killer whales, and its abundance has been associated with orca survival and ability to spawn. But for years, the southern resident orca population has been declining, with only 74 individuals in three pods. But the northern resident population has been increasing and currently have about 300 individuals. The study suggests potential competition for mature Chinook salmon between the two residents. So in, in many cases, you know, particularly for the Columbia, Fraser River, those fish are maturing, you know, far to the north. So as the fish return down the continental shelf uh, route for their returns, the, those northern residents potentially are going to have the first access uh, before southern residents do. Given southern resident orca's diverse diet in the fall and winter months, Hansen says it's important to not only increase availability of Chinook salmon, but also the other species orcas prey on. Long Live the Kings has been working to restore wild salmon and steelhead to save southern resident orcas for years. And much like the study, the organization says hatchery programs should be carefully managed. It's not good enough just to return a ton of hatchery fish in August. We have to be returning hatchery fish throughout their range um, in the places at the times and in the sizes that they're looking for. And whether that's a chum salmon or a Chinook salmon or a coho salmon or a steelhead trout, we need to be thinking about this and managing for that if we want our killer whales to recover. And researchers say that increased produ production of hatchery fish could help, but it does come with some risks. They say what would be most helpful is to increase the diversity of hatchery stock during the fall and winter months. Live in Seattle, Grace Lim, Q13 News.